Oh, I feel like this is a bit of a tricky one to answer, but I'll give it my best shot. And that is, how do you get over or deal with toxic pony club mums? Because she says, if somebody wants you to ride their horse, there's probably a reason that they don't want to do it themselves. Like give up that gym membership. If you're like mucking out all the time, you're gonna be buff. Hello everybody and welcome back to my podcast, Esme's Country Life. Today I thought we'd do a good old fashioned Q&A because I feel like I get a lot of questions that you guys ask me. You guys actually have asked me some very interesting ones as well so stay tuned to hear me answer them. But before we begin I thought I would just say a huge thank you to the sponsor of the podcast, Red Post. Red Post is an equestrian and country store based in the UK but they should also ship all over the world. Um, also, you know, we're going into the show season soon so if you're looking for a new helmet or a new body protector be sure to get it at red post also i thought i would show you if you're watching this on a video platform like youtube you'll probably be able to see what i'm holding up here if not i will do an audio description but fairfax and favor have currently or just recently come out with their fringe tassily kind of range and they also have some really cute cowgirl boots so if you're going for a western look also it's not long now until I'm off to Florida, to the USA, so lots of America vlogs coming soon. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much to Red Post for sponsoring the podcast. And yeah, go and check them out at redpostequestrian.co.uk. But anyway, talking about YouTube, I have some other really exciting news that to celebrate the one year anniversary of the podcast, which is coming up very soon, we're doing it a little bit early, a little bit of an early celebration, um, but also because the podcast has just done so well so thank you to everyone who listens regularly um if that's on all the different podcast providers um some of you might know that on my youtube channel i've been posting all of the podcast episodes now don't worry if you're a youtube listener slash watcher do not worry because the podcast is moving. We're going to make a whole new podcast YouTube channel. It's called Esme's Country Life Podcast. If you want to go and check it out also, at the moment that I'm recording this, nobody knows about it. You guys are the first to hear about it. So if you want to go over to the channel, um, you can probably be the first subscriber or at least in like the first thousand. I don't know. It depends how quick you guys are listening to this episode. But if you want to go and be like, yep, I'm one of the first subscribers on the channel, please go and subscribe. I hate being that YouTuber, like, podcaster person that's like, please like and subscribe, because I know it gets really annoying, but I really, really do appreciate it, and it really does help, but yeah, I just want to say a huge thank you for all of the love and support on the podcast, because I never thought that it'd be, like, a Spotify number one, like it has been, and all that kind of stuff, so yeah, thank you. Anyway, let's get into the Q&A, because you guys have asked some juicy questions. There are some questions here where I'm like, should I be answering this? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get into it. Oh, I don't really know. I've, I've just, I've, I've done lots of screenshots. That's how I do it. I asked you guys on Instagram. Um, so the first is, if you could go back in time and give your 12 year old self a piece of advice, what would it be? I feel like this is really tricky because it's one of those things where um, obviously you don't want to say too much to your younger self because that affects the future self which is now it's all that kind of like time travel future sci-fi kind of stuff which is a bit confusing because if I did go back and tell my past self what I'm like then surely that my future self is like that anyway but um I think <laughs> that's like really deep when you think into it but anyway moving on if I could go if 12 year old Esme could get some advice so what would, what would I be doing at age 12 age 12 I would have either be looking for Casper or have just got Casper my horse or pony depends what you want to call him he's kind of like a he's like a honey a horse pony because he's 15 hands so technically that's the height of a horse but his breed is a pony so I'm gonna say he's definitely more like a pony like pony kind of personality brain definitely pony striding he is he's like built like a sausage dog he's got quite a long be belly but he's got little little legs anyway um so I guess I could give myself some riding advice with that Maybe like advice for like school and stuff because at, you know, 12, I would have been in year seven going into year eight or year eight because I, I was, I'm, I'm a June baby. So I was always like the youngest person at school with like the school years. So I probably would be in year eight um, for the majority of 12 year old Esme. Um, what was I doing back then? I would say my biggest advice would be care less what people think I think at that age you can think a lot about um what other people think you're trying to fit in with the cool people 
I actually, to be fair, I was pretty good. I was, I like the cool people at my school, the popular people, whatever you want to call them. I like heard them talking about each other badly, like in the toilets. And I was like, you guys don't seem like you actually like each other. You don't seem like you're actually really friends. I'm quite happy in my little friendship group. So, um, and so yeah, only care about what your close friends and family and people that you really deeply care about think. Um, I got made fun of quite a bit at school, so, but then I, again, I felt like I had quite thick skin, so I'd say, yeah, just do you, do your life, everyone, everyone has different pathways in life, if everyone was the same, that would be really boring, um, with horses, I would say it's going to be tough, but you can do it, you can get through to the other side, you just need to be confident, and I think, like, confidence is probably the main thing that I really struggled with at that age with riding with life like the thought of um now I'm a lot better but especially when I first became an adult the thought of having to like ring someone up on the phone like that was quite scary when now you know I do that all the time in my job so I think confidence is something that you have to fake it till you make it and like confidence is like this is the advice my dad actually gave me confidence is a trick you have to kind of pretend you're confident to be confident so um I'd say go out there live your best life have fun if just enjoy life appreciate every moment that's so cliche (laughs) I'm trying to think of good advice but at the end of the day I'm only I'm only 22 I'm only 10 years older there's there's probably advice that you know 42 year old as me would give myself um but yeah, I feel like that's my, my, my best advice for now. I don't know if it's very good, but um, stick at it. Also, always trust your gut feeling. If something doesn't feel right, your gut's telling you this ain't good. Also do that. But also if your gut's telling you, you know, this could be an incredible opportunity. It might be difficult. It might be something different, like a different pathway to others. And you believe in yourself, go for it. But also believe in yourself because not many people will believe in you, which sounds really sad. But I feel like that's something that um, I definitely would tell my past self as well. So, yeah, that was a good one. Um, I feel like this goes like a little bit onto the same topic, actually. This this is flowing very nicely the way you guys in the order you've asked me questions. But somebody says, how are you so brave talking in front of a huge crowd? Love your videos, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um... This is definitely something that I never thought that I would be able to do. And even like today, like I was talking to my mum about it the other day, because if you've listened to the podcast recently, you'll know that recently I've been to Spoga, which is like a big horse expo in Germany where I talked in front of like 500 people. And it was also on a live stream as well. So um, a lot of people. And um, the first time I ever did like public speaking was probably at school. And um, the thing that... I used to terrify me was doing uh, my school was very big into like languages so in year seven you like the first year of like high school or secondary school you would do French Spanish and German and you would see which one you were weakest at and then you'd drop it or if you're really good oh sorry my phone is oh goodness where were we I've lost my train of thought now um talking in front of a crowd so yeah yeah sorry languages at school that's what we were talking about so when you did languages at school you obviously had a speaking exam and I used to get so nervous before them and I feel like that was the thing that actually really helped me with my public speaking because in front of the class you either had to do like a little presentation speaking in the language or you had to like talk to your teacher and like a have like a fluent conversation and I was petrified especially for my GCSE exams because a lot of that would go towards your final grade so if you just had like one bad day that was it you were not doing well so um I used to get like pretty nervous before that and after I did all those exams which I actually did pretty well in so just saying (laughs) um, I think I got an A in French and an A star in Spanish but do I remember much of it probably not that's one thing I kind of regret I wish I kept up doing like languages should have got on that like Duolingo or something like that because I used to really enjoy it and I actually thought of doing languages like further at school like maybe for like a level or something but anyway um back to public speaking um uh, the first like big public speaking thing that I was invited to do with my job I was freshly 16 and I was invited to the Pony Club conference where I was also speaking in front of 500 people. But it was also petrifying because it was in front of Pony Club mums. And also Princess Anne was there as well. So 
I don't know how I did it. I think me and my dad like went through my talk like the whole way in the car up to I think it was in Birmingham or something. So the whole way up there, we were just like going through. So I knew what I needed to say. And I think the thing that's most difficult with public speaking is if you have like a mental block where your brain just goes blank and you don't know what to talk about. So having those prompts in my head or like those like sentence starters really help. Um, but also the thing that made me so brave when doing it was because I was speaking it in my own language. I didn't have to worry about like not knowing what a certain word was. Like I was just speaking. And I think also pretending that the crowd isn't there, like maybe focusing kind of in the distance as if you're just like talking to a friend I think that helps me most obviously with the podcast you guys know I'm a very chatty person I can chat away I'm actually a very shy person in real life especially when I meet somebody new for the first time so um but I definitely have got better over time so that definitely has given me a lot of help and also talking to the camera um doing lots of interviews with high profile riders as well has made me more confident so um but also when I was at Spoga and when I was doing that um talk to everyone which was probably it was about half an hour 45 minutes like it was a long old talk but because it was something that I was really passionate about that really helped me I find I found that I wasn't actually like super nervous before that but my legs did start shaking that's one thing that when I am nervous my legs just start shaking which isn't great when you're riding a horse because obviously you need to have a steady lower leg you need to be able to give your horse the aids and like tell them what to do using like your body I guess um so that's one thing that I definitely need to work on a little bit with my riding um I don't I don't know why I just I'm I'm a sh- <laughs> I just start shaking but there we go um so yeah it's one of those things just pre- do it loads of practice and pretend that you're not speaking in front of loads of people and that's just one person and then you're chatting to a friend oh this is a fun one it's what breed of dog would you get if you ever got one um obviously I'm used to Ruby who's a Labrador which I absolutely love but being a Labrador, she is quite a big dog. And I think if I was just looking after her on my own, things like she's pretty good, like jumping up into the car, but obviously like carrying her and things like that. Um, she is quite heavy. Like she's quite a big dog in the sense that also um, being a Labrador, like a lot of people, like for a Labrador, she's quite big too. A lot of people, if she's not wearing like a pink collar, will think that she's a boy. So uh, that's quite funny on walks. I'd say at the moment my my dream like dog breed has changed a lot of over time and obviously I would quite like to rehome maybe a dog also um at some stage um because obviously there are lots of dogs out there that need homes um I actually used to work in a vet's practice as like a job when I was 16 I was a kennel girl so I saw lots of different breeds of dogs um and also got to know quite well what breeds of dogs often have certain things wrong with them if that's like breathing difficulties if that's um to do with like their hips or their ears things like that so um actually the breed of dog that I am I'm really interested in that I would love is actually the breed of dog that um I think three or four vets at this practice that I worked at all had the same breed of dog um and that is a Springer Spaniel I love Spaniels they're so cute they are very high energy dogs which I know is definitely not for everyone um I obviously live a very outdoorsy life I work from home most of the time I'm out in the yard with the horses so I feel like that would be a good dog breed for me because they're a medium kind of size they're not like a little sausage dog that I'd be worried about getting squished by the horses um but they're also not not like huge that I would struggle to carry them if I would ever need to carry them for whatever reason or lift them up into a car um so I'd probably say a spaniel I don't know if I'd go for a springer spaniel or a cocker spaniel actually two of my friends have um springer spaniels as well and they are just so lovely such sweet natured dogs so probably that but I don't know I'd be up for any old scruffy thing I I, I just love dogs so there we go let me know in the comments if you have a dog what breed of dog they are or what your favorite like dog breeds are because growing up as a kid I was I loved Dalmatians I just think they're so pretty I know that some of them can have like hearing problems but oh my gosh there's I, 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 I don't actually know anybody with a Dalmatian I think I've obviously I must have seen like a Dalmatian out in the wild before but you just don't really see them very often they are like as I guess slightly bigger dogs um 
do, 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 do. Any cottage updates? Um, I have been needing to do a cottage renovation series video for ages now because there are just like loads of little bits that I just need to finish off. Still, like my cupboards are painted. Do not worry, that has been done now. That is like the one job that I was putting off for ages. Um, but I do need to put some like doorknobs on them or like handles on them. So um, I do need to do a new cottage renovation update. Um, this weekend, I've got like a little cottage video coming out, like a vlog. It's like a cozy vlog if you want to check that out. I had so much fun filming that, which I do do a little bit of an update on my bookshelf. We're building a bookshelf at the moment, so that's looking really good. Um, the next thing is probably the garden. Um, I'd love to do a little bit more with the garden going into spring, and I think that could be really fun. Also, I feel like it's so satisfying. I've been basically just doing a lot of like clearing out at the moment, like loads of dead stuff and just like the big winter clear out. You know what I mean? There's also a lot of like bits where it just went a bit overgrown over summer which I didn't do anything with so I've been kind of like going through it like a jungle but it's getting a lot better now I've got some little um, plants also I feel like decorating the cottage for Easter or for spring could be a really cute little video so look out for that I need to film that but that could be really fun and let me know what other sort of cottage things you would love to see because um, I know that you guys love seeing updates love seeing what it's looking like because I I am also very much into sort of interior design and making things look pretty basically. <laughs> so um, there we go. So that's the cottage update for the time being. Obviously there hasn't been any like major drastic changes or building in the sense where before it was literally falling down, needed a full renovation, needed a full new bathroom. Like the big expensive things are over and done with, which is good because we're running low on budget on that sense. But um, no, it's going well. Um, also, something that I would really love to do is there's like a little summer house at the bottom of my garden that I'd love to turn into like an at-home gym or maybe like a little cool like little party kind of summer house for like having friends over, that kind of thing too. So I'd love to do that up. That needs like the walls painting. It needs like shelves putting up. I need to put all my gym stuff in there because at the moment all my gym stuff is in the downstairs toilet. So whenever I have guests over, I'm like, just use the upstairs one. Don't go in there. That's kind of like a mess cupboard at the moment, but we're getting there we're getting there so it's looking good it's looking cute i also have recently got loads of easter decorations i just need to put them up so i feel like a spring easter video could be really fun um what else have you guys asked me who is easier to ride casper or joey um, I would say they're both difficult in different ways, but I think I'm going to have to say Joey is definitely a more complex horse <laughs> or is more difficult to ride because at the end of the day, Casper is like a little Connemara pony and Joey is a sports horse. Um, I'd say Casper, if he's in a good mood and obviously if he has a beginner rider on him, like he's very good. He knows to look after the rider and to be a good boy. He might, you know, if you just, he might like cut a corner or start wandering off in a not a very straight line um, to kind of like test you a little bit, if, especially if you're like a more beginner rider. Um, but apart from that, he's not a very malicious horse. If he's, if he hasn't been ridden for like a week and he's been freshly clipped and the wind is blowing up his bum, then obviously he's going to be a little bit spicy and maybe a little bit more difficult to ride. But day to day, as things go, he's pretty chill. He's pretty honest as well. So I'd say Joey is more complex to ride in the sense where... Um, he he can be you basically have to learn how to ride six different horses when you're riding him he can be very different depending on the day um flat work he can be a little bit lazy so you need to get him going a little bit more jumping he can get a little bit excited so you need to calm him down a little bit more he, uh, um, at the begin, i'd say at the beginning of the course with joey he's a little bit more on the lazy side you're like come on pick him up let's go and then at the end of the course you're like okay calm down slow down once he gets going he can get quite long so you need to collect him a little bit more I feel like with Joey, you need to be thinking about 12 different things at once. If that's his straightness, if that's his canter, if that's his collection, all the kind of stuff. So I'd say, yeah, Joey is definitely more complex. I think that's a little bit down to 
ponies versus horses um with ponies i feel like you can if you you can teach them something and then a week later they'll still remember it and be good but with horses if you teach them something and you don't go back to it for a little while they'll be like i don't remember this what are you going on about so um i feel like that's the difference between ponies and horses although joey if he's chilled and he's very happy i mean if i put a beginner rider on him he would probably very happily poodle about i've never had a beginner rider on him um but you know, could be could be fun, could be interesting. But I think he would still like look after them and be a very good boy. Um, so yeah, that is that's that. Joey also, if he knocks a pole, he can get a bit sassy. He can throw his back legs up in the air. He gets frustrated at himself. So maybe not the best for um, that. That can be a little bit interesting to sit at times, um, especially if he's a bit excited. But yeah, I'd say definitely Casper's the easier one. Oh, I feel like this is a bit of a tricky one to answer, but I'll give it my best shot. And that is, what advice would you give someone in their late 20s who wants to start working slash caring with horses? Now, obviously, there are so many different, like, horsey industries that you can go into. So, um, you know, you can train to be a farrier or a saddle fitter or um, an equine physio. Or There are loads of different stuff. But if you just mean, like, caring for horses and looking after them, I'm going to give my best advice because one of my best friends, um, her full-time job is a groom. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what she does and what works really well with her business. So um, I've had multiple friends who have worked for different yards and different places. But I'd say my friends that are happiest in the horse industry are ones that work for themselves. So she has her own um, business and she works at a lot of private yards and um She's very lucky that she's been doing it for so long now that she works at the odds that she really likes working at. She can be a little bit more pick and choose. Um, at the end of the day, I feel like whatever industry you're in, you're going to come across like difficult clients or difficult people, um, which can be known in the horse world. So watch out for that. But um, she's very lucky that she works for herself. She can pick her own hours and um, obviously like make sure you're fully insured, that kind of thing, because that's a big thing too. Um, but yeah, I'd say maybe tr um, if you have like connections with people and a lot of the time in the equestrian world, it's not like what you know, it's more like who you know. I feel like that's how I've got a lot of jobs in. Like obviously I work more in social media than the horse world, I'd say. The horsey social media world, I don't know, it's a little bit different, but a lot of the jobs, the lot of brands that I've worked with or people that I've come across, is, a lot of it has been through word of mouth so or like friends of friends um so I feel like that's a really good way as well but um best of luck I feel like you get if you're working with horses like full time like looking after them you're gonna get super fit because you're just gonna be doing like hard work all the time if that makes sense like give up that gym membership if you're like mucking out all the time you're gonna be buff um so um yeah best of luck also like with horses if you don't know a horse also I feel like there's no, no silly no question is a silly question for example if you're going to be turning out horses or leading horses feel like ask lots of questions with their owners like have they ever kicked somebody um like just just things like that like be safe wear a helmet if you're leading and gloves if you're leading them all that kind of stuff especially if it's a horse that you don't know also one of my my friend that is a full-time groom she says that she like refuses to ride other people's horses because she says if somebody wants you to ride their horse there's probably a reason that they don't want to do it themselves so if you are going to be doing that stay safe and also like ask why it might be something like really um like reasonable like for example um there's a horse or a pony that belongs to a teenager who's really busy at school doing their exams but obviously doesn't want to sell or loan out their horse just needs someone to help school school them or ride them to keep them ticking over like that's fine but if it's like I have a five-year-old that's freshly backed that I'm too scared to ride can you ride it for me M maybe you know that might not be for you so or if not you need some danger money so there we go that is my best advice um obviously this is all from what I've heard from my friend so take everything with a pinch of salt I am no expert but that is my best advice to you and at the end of the day it can be a, such a lovely job getting to be out with horses all the time be out in the sunshine also the rain so maybe invest in like a really good waterproof trousers and coat in the horrible more horrible months actually to be fair you might not be from the uk you might be from a really lovely warm country where you don't have to worry about mud so anyway best wear your sun wear your sun cream as well because if you're going to be out a lot get that 
SBF 50 on because I feel like us horsey girls, we need to we need to keep you need to look after our skincare because we spend a lot of time outside and in the sun. Good bit of vitamin D though. So there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna give any advice on this question, but somebody, somebody left me this question. And when I tell you, I cackled when I first read it. And that is, how do you get over or deal with toxic pony club mums? I'm not gonna answer this one, but I just wanted to put that out there for anybody who wants a little bit of a chuckle to themselves because that really did make me laugh. Oh, honestly, I don't know if there's even an answer for that one. So. Um, how is Mickey getting along? Can we have some news about him? So if you don't know who Mickey is, Mickey is my first pony that I still have today. He's a little 13 hand Cromello pony. He is now 26. He has many different medical conditions and problems that are wrong with him. He's got Cushing, so he's on medication for that every day. He's got a respiratory problem. He's got skin conditions, so we have to treat him with special cream to make sure that his skin doesn't get all flaky and nasty. And anyway, um, and yeah, he's just he's just getting a little bit older. He's probably got a bit of arthritis, but he's doing really well. Um, I feel like the best thing for him was rehoming our very very small pony duke from world horse welfare duke was also very young when we first got him he was only a yearling so those two boys go out together and i feel like mickey getting duke is like an old dog having a puppy in their life it's just made mickey seem so much younger like they go out and play like duke keeps mickey exercised almost because they go running around the field together recently we've been putting them in the sand school rather than the fields during the day just because their field in particular has been so muddy we've had so much rain and floods over here it's not been great with the weather but spring is around the corner the sunshine should be coming out there are days obviously where mickey seems a little bit older and i look at him and i'm, and I'm like you are like a really old pony aren't you but at the moment he's still going strong um he's actually due a blood test because of the medication that he's on he has to have a blood test regularly to make sure that he's on the right levels that he's doing all right so that is coming up so we'll keep you updated if he needs any more drugs but at the moment he seems he seems okay um but yeah that's that's the mickey update for you he's just living his best life really with duke being very very muddy um but no he's good that is the Mickey, that's the Mickey update. If anything changes, I'll keep you updated. <laughs> oh, this is a really nice question. What's your favourite thing about where you live? Now, obviously, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful about what I say because I don't want any weirdos turning up to my house. Um, but I, I, um, the most information I can give you about where I live without being worried about weird people is that I live in the south of England so we're like the sunniest part of England which is great um we're also by the sea as well so I'm really lucky that um actually near us we have a sandy beach and a pebble beach so um I actually sometimes if I'm going to the beach as like a beach I actually prefer a pebble beach. I know it's controversial, it's controversial, but it's where I've kind of grown up. I feel like pebble beaches are fun because you can use the stones and you can skim them across the sea, which is always good fun. Also, you don't have to worry about sand getting in everywhere because I feel like when you go to a sandy beach, sand, you, you'll be finding sand in like your ears, in your bum crack, I don't know, like in your towel, in your bag, like just in your car everywhere so maybe that was a bit too much information <laughs> but when, I just feel like when you go to a sandy beach you, you, you can never leave the sand um, with a pebble beach you don't have to worry about your feet getting all sandy if you go for a little paddle you can you know put your socks back on without them feeling all crunchy um, one thing that you do have to be careful about with our beaches is we have this thing called um, weaver fish um i used to call them weevil fish when i was younger i couldn't say weaver fish but there we go um which basically is a fish that's on the bottom of the sea and if you step on it they put like toxins or something you read it on google there's going to be a better information that, than just some 22 year old girl but um i have known people that have stepped on it and they've it's not been good i think you're supposed to put your feet in like really really hot water if you ever step on one so um, my top tip if you do go to a british beach is wear crocs or oh, actually crocs are probably the best you can get like little sea shoes i actually have some croc trainers which are very cool very sexy i know but um i wore them when i was in australia actually and they were really good for like obviously 
coral and that kind of stuff obviously you don't really want to step on coral it's like protected and stuff but you never know what you could step on so i have some really snazzy croc trainers but which are good because you can lace them up you can do them a little bit tighter and from a distance they just look like normal trainers but they do have little holes in so you don't get like wet oh i guess you're gonna get wet feet if they're in the sea anyway but you know what i mean is they're just more like sea shoes i guess um so that would be my best advice for your summer holly bobs that, that i don't like that word i don't know why i said it summer holidays in the uk um but yeah so um but it, as as the uk goes we don't really have any dangerous animals i mean the most dangerous like, animals we have is probably like an adder which is a snake that like if you're a child like a very small child maybe you could die from the poison but apart from that like we don't have to worry about bears or wolves or like every now and again i'll just be walking in the forest and i'm like oh my gosh if i was in i don't know some states of america or canada or whatever you'd be worrying about bears or wolves or that kind of thing we obviously have spiders and things which you could get bitten from but it's not like anything in australia where you're gonna have to worry about the venom and dying and things like that so we're very luckily lucky in that sense i think on, honestly i think the most dangerous animals in the uk are horses <laughs> so there we go um or cows i think cows are known for like if you if you ever um in a field of cows this is some to top tips here to obviously take all my advice with a pinch of salt because i don't want anyone to sue me they get trampled by a cow so yeah take take this advice with caution <laughs> but um a lot of the time especially if you're walking on a footpath where not many people walk you'll find that loads of cows might start coming up to you and cows are very curious animals they just want to see who you are what you're doing especially if they have babies they're like who's this weirdo walking in my field i don't see you about these parts um so a lot of the time if people see cows they peg it, they start running away. And obviously the cows are gonna be like, who's this person running? Let's go and see who they are. And obviously they start chasing them. So that's how a lot of people end up getting trampled by cows. So um, if you are walking in a cow field, obviously stick to the footpath. I find sticking to the fence lines pretty safe as well. Um, but also just, just stand still and make yourself look big. And a lot of the time, cows are actually quite scared. Like there have been a time where I've had cows come up to me. And I'm like, mm, you get a little bit too, a little bit too close for comfort, and you just make make myself big. And I'm just like, <laughs> this sounds so weird, but just like jump a meter in front of them, and be like, boo, and the cows are like, Meh. but obviously, if there are like pregnant cows, please don't go and scare cows. Only if you know you feel a bit endangered by them and they're getting a bit too close to comfort, but don't run away from them because they'll just chase you and then you'll get flattened. So that is my cow cow advice for people. <laughs> Um, I would say my favourite place probably has to be the woods near where we are. It's so pretty. I love how we have different seasons as much as this time of year where it's wet, cold, windy, rainy, horrible. It's I, It makes me appreciate spring more. It makes me appreciate summer more. And I do really love the seasons having, but getting to be cosy. And I feel like, yeah, we do have the best of all worlds really where I live. Like we're not that far away from London. You can do London in a day trip. So if I want to go to the city and live the city girl life, I can go and do that or one of my local cities or towns. Um, but also I feel like where I live is also cosy and like a little corner of the world that not many people know about, which is lovely. And we have the hills as well, which is great for riding the horses up there. Really good for hill work. And the views up there are incredible as well. So we kind of have like, we have like lots of different biomes. I don't know if that's the right word. I only know that really from geography, A-level and Minecraft. So <laughs> we have lots of different biomes where we live basically. So a little bit of, a little bit of everything. There's also a desert not too far away from where we live as well, which is kind of cool, so. Do you like reading books? If the answer is yes, then what genre, genre I can't speak today, what genre do you like the most? Um, yes, I do love reading books. Um, if you couldn't tell, if you're watching this on YouTube, there are some, my books behind me. I am an author. I have little, I have some children's books about horses, which is fun. Um, but anyway, um, books that I like reading, that's really tricky because I feel like everyone has a real like everyone i feel like it's a it's a very personal topic what sort of books you like reading a bit like music taste because everyone has such different tastes and i feel like people are quite judgy as well i don't know um i'm gonna have to put romance up there which i know is cliche like girl in her 20s that kind of thing but if i ship a couple 
It makes me want to read on, to see them get together, see what happens. I feel like once you've read so many romance books, though, they can get a little bit cliche, a little bit like, okay, like enemies to lovers or that kind of thing, like Sunshine and or like Golden Retriever, Black Hat and Jeep, that kind of thing. I don't know, it just gets a little bit repetitive. So I've kind of swayed away from them, but that kind of got me into reading a little bit. The Hunger Games books were probably the books that really got me into reading back in the day, back in like 2012, 2013, when that was all the rage. Um, especially with the new film coming out, I feel like I should reread them, that could be fun. Um, so like dystopian future books is what I kind of got into when I was younger, which I found really interesting um, how people think the world might be in the future and stuff like that. Um, or how the dangers of society, I don't know, weird stuff like that, I find really. So anything like sci-fi, futuristic, I find really interesting. Um, anything like fantasy as well, like sometimes you just want to get away to a little magical place in your brain. Obviously, big fan of all the Harry Potter books. Um, but anything like fantasy is also quite good fun too, especially if you have like a fantasy romance crossover. Woo. Um, I also love mystery books as well. Like anything with a mystery will get me hooked or get me reading because I want to know who did it. I want to know like what's happening in this mystery. Like who, why, why has this happened? Anything like true crime as well is quite interesting too. Um, but yeah, so I guess they're kind of my go-to genres, a little bit of everything. Um, I'm not really much of a non-fiction kind of person or kind of gal. Like, I, I guess it depends on the topic, but a lot of the time I'm like, if I'm reading, I want to escape to a magical place or a different world. I also like quite a lot of like YA books as well or young adult books, which I know like a little bit younger, but as someone who's like a, got a bit of dyslexia over here, I do find sometimes reading them like a little bit easier. Um, so there we go. I think I, I really like books where there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of going in between the characters rather than like world building and describing like what things look like. I think I, I like to relate to the characters rather than the world more i don't know maybe that's just me so what else do we have going on in the questions oh this is an interesting one so every now and again people have spotted that i've mentioned formula one i'm a big formula one fan um this person says you mentioned f1 a few times what's your um team and driver i'm lewis hamilton and mercedes now i feel like this is really tricky for me I, I I I I don't want I don't want people to think this is weird, but I feel like I float around a bit with the teams. I don't know. I think it's because I've been watching Formula One. Like my family is a Formula One family. Like some families, they watch the rugby. Some families, they watch football. But in the Higgs household, we're a Formula One household. Like my grandparents watch it. My parents actually my mom isn't that bothered, but my dad and my brother watch it. So I kind of like grew up just like every Sunday having the F one on the telly and um so i've i've been watching it for a long old time um i uh, my brother is a really big f1 fan and he's hopefully going to be working in he's he's got a i don't know if i should say this or not but he is going to be working for a formula one team next year so that's really exciting so part of me wants to say that team i don't know if i should if i should i'm not going to say what the team is because i feel like that's going to be a little bit too close to home um because obviously that's his life that's his personal choice if he wants to share personal information online um but i feel like i should probably i kind of want to say that team um growing up obviously I've been like watching Lewis Hamilton back in the day when he was with McLaren with Jensen Button so that is how OG F1 fan I am so um I think McLaren might have to be up there Mercedes might have to be up I don't know it, I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna say too much because I feel like people are gonna judge me for what team I support but they're up there um obviously all the british ride i was gonna say riders then sorry i got my horse brain on obviously root in for all the british drivers as a british gal myself um george russell seems really lovely um but yeah i'm i'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say that for now <laughs> i don't know um i've actually been lucky enough to go to two formula one um actual like races one was in Texas, which don't worry if you are not a Formula One fan. I'm going to make this interesting. Don't worry. Don't don't I don't want this to be too boring for you. But one was in Texas, and I'd say that was the best ever Grand Prix to go to in person. The only one where I'd say it's better being there than watching it on telly because we were sat at the turn one, really high up. 
on the um like hill and we could base we could see like where the paddock was we could see where the pits were we could see like basically almost the whole track and we obviously had a screen in front of us and we had speakers as well also biggest tip if you are going to go to a formula one race do it properly don't go general admission make sure you have seats because I went to Monza back in 2022 and I think they oversold the amount of general admission tickets and that was a nightmare. You had to stand behind like three different people if you wanted to get a view or you just had to get there at like four in the morning to get a spot. So um, yeah, and it also that was like during a heat wave as well. So um, that that's a whole different story, <laughs> but I had great fun going there as well. Obviously when I was in Monza, I had to support Ferrari. I had like my little Ferrari cap and top on because I feel like, if if we were in anything else, we probably would have been spat on or something because it, there's only one team to support when you're in Italy and that is Ferrari. So there we go. Um, but yeah, that that is that is my Formula One journey. Obviously, it drives to survive. Love watching that. If you are not sure about Formula One, I'd say watch Drive to Survive. And it does, it makes it really interesting. Like there are some things obviously that they really over dramatize or make really dramatic. But um, I remember like, watching it with a friend and then being like oh my gosh this makes formula one like actually interesting so i feel like when you've got teams that you root for or drivers that you root for and you see a little bit more behind the strategies obviously there are going to be races that i can't lie like there, there are races where i've fallen asleep in, in while watching but to be fair from watching with the family if with family and a lot of the time it's on a sunday i'm knackered i've had a busy work week it's nice to have like an hour or two with it on the telly you can just chill it's on in the background something fun and it's just like a, it's almost like an excuse to, to have a little rest have a little sit down on the sofa so which sounds bad but as a busy adult that's just how life gets sometimes so no I'm, I'm a big formula one fan so there we go but I think we well, I think we all know that Max Verstappen is probably gonna do very well this season once again which would make it boring but next year 2025 with Hamilton going to Ferrari everything's changing everything's oh uh, that is going to that's going to hopefully be a really good season we'll see but i'm excited for that but uh, yeah it was a bit of a jump scare everyone uh, everyone was like he's going to ferrari anyway sorry i will move on from the formula, formula one for my non-formula one people um what should we go for next how many pets have you had in total throughout your whole life oh my goodness i don't know if i've ever added this up before I might wait. I I might come back to you in a minute. We'll do a cut, and I'm gonna add up because I've had a lot of pets. So a lot of them have been guinea pigs and chickens, which obviously, you know, guinea pigs they don't live for ages, and we've had like guinea pig babies and everything. So I'm gonna go get my notes app up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go go through all the pets, and I can tell you because this is quite exciting. Okay. Alrighty, I have counted up all of the pets. We're there. Okay, so in total, um, 51 pets I've had in my lifetime. Obviously, very sadly, not all of them are with us. Um, so we're going to start off with donkeys. We've got the three donkeys. You guys know them. Bruno, Toby, Willow. Um, goldfish. I've had six goldfish in my lifetime. No longer have any, but they were good pets when I was a kid. Uh, rabbits. We had two rabbits when I was younger. They were called Pebble and Thunder. Um, they're sadly no longer with us. That was when I was like five or six, we got them. Horses, obviously, this is not in any particular order also. Horses, we've got the four that you guys know, Joey, Mickey, Duke, and Casper. Uh, guinea pigs, I've had 18 guinea pigs in my lifetime. Sadly, I have no longer have any guinea pigs. We also had guinea pig babies twice. We had one litter of four, and then with another guinea pig, we had a litter of two. So there we go. When we had the litter of two, we had a boy and a girl, and the boy was called Ewok, and we did get him neutered so he could live with the rest of his ladies. Um, out of those 18 guinea pigs, how many did we rescue? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think eight were rescue guinea pigs. Um, and then chickens. I've had 18 chickens in total in my lifetime. And um, we've still got the, we've got the four new orange ones. And then we have um, Mars. Also, I still need to name the new ones. So the chicken video should be coming out soon. So I'm going to take the names from that. 
my family and I were going to put them all together and decide what name's best. But yeah, 51 pets in total. That also doesn't include any sea monkeys that I had as a kid. If you don't know what sea monkeys are, they're basically, you'd actually buy them from like a toy shop or like a children's shop rather than like a pet shop because they're basically, they come in like a little box and you just add powder to water and it's got the eggs in and they're like little crustacean kind of things that swim about so we're not going to count them we're not going to count when my family and I hatched um tadpoles from like frog's eggs when we were younger we found them in the pond um that was actually our school pet when I was in reception we brought some tadpoles in and hatched them into frogs so that was quite cool um and we're also not going to count um any lone ponies or friends pets that I look after or that kind of thing we're going to be like this pet I own sole responsibility although when I was five the donkeys were not my sole responsibility and technically they're still owned by my parents so there we go anyway that I think we're going to finish it on that question because I feel like I've definitely been chatting on for so long again I'll probably do another Q&A in the future so um that'll be good fun because so many of you have asked me questions so if you ask me a question over on my Instagram thank you so much for answering and I'm really sorry that I didn't answer it if I didn't but yeah a lot of you had really good questions as well so thanks for all of that um but yeah before we finish go and head over to the oh my tummy is rumbling i'm ready for some lunch <laughs> before we finish be sure to please head over to the esme's country life podcast youtube channel and please subscribe like all the things because i really really do appreciate it and thank you for listening to today's episode thank you again to red post for sponsoring the podcast and if you need any equestrian or country needs be sure to go and check them out but anyway i will see you guys all in the next episode bye